In this video, I'm going to be doing a probability experiment using coins and a spreadsheet. So we're going to start off by actually putting in some columns first. Let's put in coin one, coin two, oops, coin three, okay, and then I'm going to make a, a total column right here. So I'm just doing this actually in Google Sheets. You can do it in Excel and it should work identically. Okay, so coin one, we want this to be a head or a tail, okay? So the easiest way to do that, to generate a random head or a tail, is I'm gonna sort of designate uh, a zero as a tail and a one as a head. Okay, so I'm gonna generate a random number between zero and one, and that's how I'm gonna designate heads and tails. And there is a method built into, or a function built into spreadsheets called rand between. So to do that, I'm gonna go hit equals and type in rand between, you can see it comes up there. And what this does is it generates a random integer between two values inclusively. Okay, so rand between zero comma one. All right, so this particular one, it generated a zero for me. I'm gonna use this little corner here and I'm gonna pull this formula into coin two and coin three, okay? So each time, what it does is it copies and pastes it when you pull that. So in this one, coin 1 became a 0, coin 2 became a 0, and then coin 3 became a 1. If I were to change something, it generates new numbers. Okay, every time I, I, I do something, it generates new numbers. So in this, in this case here, again, I got no head, no head, and then one head right here. Okay, let's do more than one round even. Let's go ahead and generate 10 rounds. So I have to go to row 11 for that. Okay. And again, using that little corner there, what that does is it copies and pastes the, uh, the formula. It just fills it all in. So that's kind of nice. So I, I now did 10 rounds of my experiment. And every time I get a 1, I'm designated that as being a head. Okay. Now my total column, what I'm going to do is add up how many heads did I get during this trial. So my first one, I should have a 0. This one, I should have a 1. This one, I should have a 0. This one should be a 1. But it's going to change all the time. So I'm going to use a formula for this. I'm going to go equals sum bracket and I'm just going to highlight the row. So add those up. And I need it to be a formula so that if I get new coins, it will change this number. I don't want to just type in the sum manually. Okay? So this formula, again, I want to copy and paste it all the way down. I'm just going to drag this down. And there we go. So in there and you can see like this one here, there was three three coins that came up heads. So I have three there, which is pretty cool. And actually, none of them had zero. Uh, if I were to do something different, okay, now we have one that has a zero. So it's really neat. This this is like a like a live experiment that changes every time I change the spreadsheet. Now, what I want to do is I want to make a couple more uh, details here. Okay, let's go ahead and make a thing that says zero heads. A thing that says one head, two heads and three heads. And what I want to do is I want to basically have a number here tell me how many times did zero come up here. So only one trial here I got a zero. I want that to say one in this case. So to do this we're going to use a function called um, count if. So go equals count if. And the way this works is we want to indicate the region where we're looking first. So in this case I'm looking at column D and I want to look for the number zero. I want to know how many times did zero come up. Okay, so in this case, okay, there's my equation. It came up one time. You can see it right here. I got one single zero. Let's do the same thing here. Equals count if I'm looking in region D or column D. I'm looking for the number one. How many times did one head come up? Okay, this time I got three of them. So one, two, three. Let's do the other two. Count if column D. Let's look for two heads this time. And the last one, count if, column D, we're looking for three heads. And remember, every time I do something, this changes, right? So this is really, really interesting. So I, I got zero heads. I got exactly two with one head. I got seven with two heads. So that's pretty popular. And one with three heads. So when you're doing this experiment, it may look completely different than mine, and that's okay. Okay, and every time you change it, this graph will, or these numbers will change. Okay, next thing I'm going to do is I want to turn this into like a bar chart. I want to be able to 
see columns and, and have a little bar indicating you know, how big these are. <coughs> so to do this, highlight this area here, include the headers, and go to Insert, Chart. <coughs> Excuse me. Now, one thing about um, Google Sheets, and, and, and I think spreadsheets in general, if your data is going sideways like that, you may need to look for a button that says Switch Rows and Columns. So right now, I mean, it kind of works, but I don't really like it the way it is. I kind of want the labels on the bottom. I don't want the labels up here. So I'm going to click the switch rows and columns, and that's more what I'm looking for. Okay, I want these separated. These are distinct items that's not continuous data. So I want a gap between these bars. This is exactly the type of graph that I want to see here. And you're, go you're free to go ahead and customize this how you'd like. What I usually do is if uh, there's a legend here with nothing, it's just a little square. I'm going to take the legend out. So for me, I'm going to go to Customize, Legend, and remove it. That's just my preference. But you can do whatever you want. You can put a title on it on as well. There's no, there's no problem. But uh, just for the sake of the video, I'm not going to bother right now. Okay. And this thing, I'm just going to move it just to the side here. Okay. Now, it's sort of interesting right now. I have no heads, right? Let's go ahead and just change it. So, yeah, there we go. These numbers actually all change live, which is really, really cool. So... The question now is, in my experiment, is this actually accurate? Okay, is it accurate that you know I'm getting no heads or no no scenarios with all three heads? With ten trials, I mean it's probably accurate, but is this a reasonable distribution of how these things should look? Let's go and do some more examples. Okay, so let's take this, and I'm going to stretch it instead of ten. I'm going to go up to fifty this time. So I need to go to actually to 51 if I want to do 50 trials. Okay. So it's beginning to look a little bit better. It's pretty rare you get zero. It's pretty rare you get three. The most common scenarios are one and two. But even these, I don't know if I would argue that these are perfect, okay? So the more trials you do, the more accurate this should get. You know, try stretching a single to 100. Try stretching it to 1,000. See what you get here, okay? And these graphs will uh, will definitely definitely look different depending how how you want this to, uh, or the more trials you do. There's one more thing I want to show you, and that's this explore button here. If you highlight your entire spreadsheet, you can click this button; it'll select everything. Um, there's a button down here called Explore, and there's all kinds of little options inside of here. And this is a feature of Google Sheets, which is pretty cool. It tells you like sums, averages, things like that, and it's really neat for individual columns. But what's really neat, you can see some graphs as well, but this formatting thing is really cool. You can actually change the color, and you can have it alternating colors. It looks really professional when you do something like this. So this is actually a really nice feature, and it can really like make your spreadsheets pop when you do stuff like this. So let's go with uh, this blue here. And uh, it's nice because it just does it automatically. You don't have to worry about anything, which is really neat. So... Anyways, I hope you learned a little bit about uh, experimental probabilities. So this is a, a, an experiment where I'm generating random coins using a method called ran between. Uh, I'm, I'm summing them up, figuring out how many times the, the thing came up, and I'm making a live uh, chart to, to show how this works. So this is the distribution here. So I ended up getting seven heads, with, or seven times the zero heads, 17 with one head, 20 with two, and six with, with three. And the more you stretch this out, ideally, the more accurate this bar, bar chart will look and the more the distribution will look like it should look.